Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. You are on The Steady Coach. And yes, today we are back with another success story. I love success stories and I love sharing them with you. This one is no exception. This one is coming to you from Rose, who is sharing her story of recovery from suspected PPPD or 3PD. Rose never received a formal diagnosis because none of the medical testing that she had done, and of course she had extensive testing done, revealed any problem whatsoever, which I'm sure many of you can identify with. Rose's symptoms started just over a year before we recorded this interview, and at the time, she had a three-year-old and eight-month-old at home. So you can imagine how devastating and how scary it was for these kinds of symptoms to show up at that time. Rose is here to share her story of, of course, what things were like when things were bad, but Rose also happened to have found my channel relatively early in the process of her recovery, which was, of course, very helpful. And very importantly, Rose took my advice very early and decided to work with a therapist who specializes in mind-body disorders. So she's going to be sharing some insights that she received from her therapy and how important that was in her process of recovery, which I think may help some of you decide whether that's something you need or not, but at the very least, emphasize how important it is to do some kind of emotional processing, emotional work and growth beyond just learning to respond to the symptoms differently or using neuroplasticity methods like changing the way that your nervous system responds to symptoms on their own. So please enjoy this interview. And as always, I love hearing from you, especially after success stories. I love knowing that they're making a difference for you. So please leave me a comment. Please leave any questions below in the YouTube comments as well. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can hop on YouTube to let me know as well. And as always, like, share, subscribe to my channel. Those things are really helpful to me. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can follow the podcast and leave me a five-star review. All right, please enjoy this conversation with Rose. All right, Rose. Hey, thank you Hi. so much. Hi, I'm so excited to have you here. And this is going to be my first time hearing the whole story all the way yeah. through. So I am full of curiosity and excitement about today. Um, yeah. But before we get into the story of what you went through and your recovery, I would love to know a little bit more about you in general. So who yeah. is Rose? Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm honored to be here too. Um, yeah, I am a, a mom. I've got two little ones, um, pretty busy life, uh, a lot of fun interests. I'm, <laughs> I'm into knitting, very cool, very uh, cool. obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, reading, uh, now more audiobooks than, than books, but um, yeah. I would say typical, just live in the suburban two kids life right now. So and and your kids are young. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When this first happened, uh, they were eight months and three years old. So now yeah. I have an almost two year old and uh, mm -hmm. almost five year old. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for for putting that into context for us. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more about who you are throughout this interview, mm -hmm. um, but let's let's hear what brought you here so yeah if you could tell us more about how all the symptoms got started and how Absolutely. everything got going totally well i mean and at first i just like to say that like chronic dizziness stinks like it's i'm sure and i i feel like i've heard many people say this on in the interviews um you wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy uh it was really the deepest darkest moments of my life when it first happened it was horrible. So I just want to put that out there because I feel like in my journey, that wasn't very validated or acknowledged, um, especially on the medical side for a long time. So anyone listening, like it stinks and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, because I just didn't get to hear that. So, um, but yeah, I, so wow, I just, I just have to unpack that for a second and just, yeah. let's just say, I am so sorry to hear that that was your experience. I, yeah. I just, as you know, this is a very common thing. It just, mm -hmm. can I ask, were you, were you just, just kind of gaslighted? Like, were they just like, oh, it's all in your I head or were they like, just, oh, we, 
you know, you're it wasn't fine. necessarily gaslit. It was just more, I feel like there just wasn't an acknowledgement of how painful and hard it was because I don't feel like anyone I was in contact with truly understands what chronic dizziness is. Um, only one like professional physical therapist brought it up to me. Um, I just feel like whenever I brought it up, it was just like, huh? Like, I don't know if they knew about it. It just that. And I feel like, you know, some people just have better bedside manners than others. Um, and sometimes brilliant doctors don't always have the the best bedside manner. So I think, you know, um, but even in the therapy world, I, you know, we talked about this a little bit before we hopped on is just that um, I was searching for someone to counsel me through this. And a lot of people just didn't understand um, that it is also a mental and physical like issue. Um, and so that was very like brushed aside. And I'm like, no, 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 but I'm having like a medical like emergency. <laughs> like I'm not just anxious because I'm like anxious or I'm crazy. Right, like right, I right, actually right. like have something that is really scary. Nobody's giving me answers. So it does feel a little like gaslit. Like, well, it's not a big deal. You should just get on with life and not be worried about it. And it's right. like, I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> um, right. I can't right. read. I can't write. Um, I, you know, it was, it was hard. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, for speaking to that. Yeah. And I, this is why Sometimes I'll see comments on my channel asking, oh, so what you're saying is this is just anxiety, right? And we need to treat it like anxiety. And I'm like, I get where you're coming from, but no, because mm -hmm. anxiety has a, depends on how you define anxiety, but generally when we think of anxiety, we think of, of anxiety as like a psychological problem or like a, mm -hmm. a, a psychiatric issue. And that's, that's not the same as, yeah as the fight or flight response that's yes. that's leading to this chronic disease I feel like cycle. this there's like a double down because like I feel like you know I I've struggled with anxiety in my life like surprise you know surprise uh -huh. um before this yeah. but this is also a physical your body is physically reacting to a misfiring of things so you're actually anxiety is a symptom <laughs> it's like a yes. physical so it's like a double like it's actually you know, I kind of had to remind myself that like some of it is just my body um, yeah. behaving this way. Yes. Sorry, I'm, if you hear a crying child. And this, time, here, right we, as we're talking about anxiety <laughs> and stress, it's happening yeah. in, the, in real time, right? In the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. fine. And as I, I mentioned also off camera to you, my children are home for winter break. So we may have cameos from multiple children yeah. during this discussion. <laughs> and I guess that's, yeah. just, that's just the way our lives are right now, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I interrupted you. Thank you for allowing me to oh, do no, that. Um, just coming back to you, you had said this is how things started. Yeah. So yeah. I, my kind of journey started in early October of 2022. So like a little over a year ago. Yeah. Um, I went to bed on a Friday night, a uh, normal, typical Friday night. I remember, you know, looking back, it's like, you know, hindsight's 2020. Um, it was a tough week. Like I had two very little kids, so I wasn't getting the best sleep. Um, my job wasn't super high stress, but it was pretty busy and I was having a pretty busy big week. Um, and I just remember feeling very run down that week, but honestly, that's not out of the ordinary for me having two kids and full-time work and all that stuff. Um, so I went to bed on a Friday night. Uh, and at some point in the night, I like kind of went up to turn over and I had like full blown vertigo, um, you know, room spinning. And I was so like half out of it that I just was like, oh, oh no, I don't like this. Like, and I just turned back over to the, the side I was on and went back to sleep. I didn't, I, you know, I think I just was like, oh, whoa, this is weird. Um, and then when I woke up in the morning, I didn't feel right. I had had something similar happen maybe like 12 years before I actually woke up with vertigo. Um, and thought I was dying and like, you know, I was like, Oh God, what's going on? And I went to urgent care and they were like, Oh, you have strep throat. Um, so I guess I had vestibular neuritis. I don't know. Um, but I had like zero symptoms of the strep throat. And then after they told me I like had the symptoms and they put me on antibiotics and I was fine. Wild. Like after the, I never, you know, had it again. 
So um, I thought, oh, maybe I just kind of have strep throat again. Maybe, the, you know, this happened to me once before. So I wasn't really worried about it, but I also felt weird. Like I felt floaty and dizzy and kind of weird. And I mentioned to my husband, I felt weird. And then at some point I tried to turn from my le left to the right and I had a really big vertigo uh, episode again. Um, and then I did, you know, of course, what you're not supposed to do, which is I Googled and uh, it said BP. PV. And so I did the Epley maneuver, which, you know, also made me have crazy vertigo. Um, but then after that, for the most part, I never, like, I think the next evening I woke up and I had it again. And I just did the Epley maneuver again, because I had gone to urgent care that day and they did the maneuver and it didn't bring up the vertigo. So it seems like if I had a dislodged crystal, it went back. Um, so I, you know, went through the weekend and I just felt dizzy like 24 seven. Like I, it was hard for me to kind of walk and it was just, um, it, it would kind of be heightened and then feel okay. And so I'd think like, oh, maybe I'm getting better. And it just never did. So then, you know, I, you know, went through the whole like seeing doctors over the next week or so. Um, and then the symptoms just kind of got worse. Like I started having tinnitus. I actually had really, um, hardcore, like uh, noise sensitivity on that right side. Um, so I was really scared and confused and very stressed out. And that week at work was like really stressful. And it started to become clear to me, like, I can't continue this road that I'm on. Um, I had to take a medical leave from work because going on Zoom calls, I, I would, I mean, I'd have to run to the bathroom afterwards. I'd be so sick from looking at the computer screen. Um, I couldn't read. That would make me dizzy. I couldn't write. I couldn't go on walks. Um, and I was getting so dizzy that I was getting nauseous and vomiting. So that kind of just spiraled, like snowballed into a lot of anxiety, symptoms just being. 24 seven, uh, my eyes stopped working. So like I would be looking or trying to read something and then I would look up and I couldn't focus on the room in front of me. Um, you know, uh, that was really scary. I didn't know what was going on with my eyes. Um, so it was just kind of this barrage. And then like, you know, with that came a lot of health anxiety because then you read things online and I'm thinking I have Meniere's disease or I have like, you know, some kind of crazy neurological thing. And, um, it just was really, really hard. Uh, and being a mom at that point of two small kids and feeling like I can't take care of my kids, my mom had to come up. Luckily, my mom had just retired, so she was able to kind of help. Um, but the first, I would say, like six weeks were just horrible. I was just in the pit of a deep, dark hole. I thought, I'm going to feel like this forever. I wasn't getting answers. I wasn't getting validation. Um, it makes me like well up because it was just really, really hard. Um, the hardest thing I've, you know, ever kind of gone through in my life. And, you know, I wouldn't wish on anyone. And it, the dizziness, it wasn't even like it, it wasn't even just dizziness, right? I don't know if anyone's ever described this. Like, I would feel like simultaneously, like I was sitting on one of those like whirl around things at the um, park. But then there were times where like, I would be sitting and I, it was like someone had severed the like mind body connection. I would just feel like I was floating into the ether. Like I couldn't like just be like, I, it was, it felt like I was on some crazy hard drugs and I couldn't get off. Like that was what was also very hard was like, there was no escape. Like it wasn't like, Oh, well, if I lay down, I'll feel better. Or, Oh, if I go on a walk, like it just felt like everything exacerbated it. Um, so I was dizzy falling asleep. I was dizzy upon waking. I couldn't sleep. I would wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't eat. I lost like 10 pounds in those six weeks. Um, just, I had to, like my sister finally like bought insure for me. Like, please sip this. Like I just had zero appetite. Um, so it was just really, really hard. And I just was very confused and um, frankly, just in a really bad spot. Um, so that's kind of my story of like how it started. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never really gotten an answer as to exactly what happened that evening. And I don't know if I ever will, but I think I had a hardware, like vestibular thing, whether that's BPBV or vestibular migraine or whatever. Um, and that kind of just set off the triple PD or 
MMDS or whatever. Yeah. They're all, I feel like in that kind of same umbrella. Of, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know exactly, like I've never really been uh, diagnosed with anything officially, but right. um, I've, we've ruled out a lot of stuff. So of I'm sure got, you've ruled out everything else in yeah. the I mean, sun, even right? I went to like a specialist, I mean, this year even, um, who thought like maybe it was a Meniere's kind of type thing. Cause I've also had dealt with like some ear fullness and stuff. Um, and we did like a specialized MRI that you can only get in like three places in the U S where they looked at my, like, you know, the inside of my mm-hmm. ear and, um, they were like, that's yeah, fine. everything's normal, you know? And so it's like so hard. Cause it's like, well, that's great. But also like, what the heck is going on? Like what is happening? Yeah. So yeah. 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 And of course, I know you didn't come here to have me say, oh, this is probably what happened. But I think I'm going fr- to, I'm going to to venture a guess based on your description that probably what we were dealing with with was BPPV. It sounds yeah, yeah. very much like BPPV. Yeah. The reason I'm saying this is because there are people watching this right now. I know some of them personally whose symptoms started with an episode of BPPV. And okay. I want to normalize this because yeah. BPPV has benign in the name. So people mm-hmm. hear that and then really, if you go online, and this is honestly my clinical experience too, and you'll hear this from physical therapists, 90 something percent of the time, BPPV is super simple to treat. It's not mm-hmm. the most pleasant thing. It's just, you get no. it, you, know, you do the epley or a different repositioning maneuver yeah. and it's all taken care of. And, and there's just, there's not as much acknowledgement that people can end up with long-term mm-hmm. symptoms yeah. from an event yeah. that's fine. Um, so that's, that's the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up. Yeah, it, it, conversation because again, other people have told me so many times how important it is for them to hear about their exact stories happening mm-hmm. to someone yeah. else. So this is to me what happened, likely what yeah. happened to you. That Just, and it makes me feel yeah. better too. And you know, because I think you can kind of drive yourself crazy just trying to even figure out what oh yeah you know, started everything and what you know. And yeah. and I think also like. I have tried, I, I really have to be careful with like, cause I am, you know, we, we were joking about, I'm, I'm very type A. I'm like, <laughs> give me a solution. I will do the steps. Mm-hmm. So I think for me also being okay with like the gray area of like, I don't exactly know. Um, and without saying like, well, I need a diagnosis. So like, maybe it's vestibular migraine and like, I need to like go down this thing and see a specialist. It's like, maybe I just need to accept that. I just, I'm already on the road to recovery. We don't need, you know, another test, another thing to tell me everything's fine. So I think that's a big thing for me (laughs) to like work on. So important. And just like, I just want to highlight this also. I know I, I I keep interrupting your story with these highlights, but it's such good stuff for people to hear. So, um, I, I've, I think sometimes like, what's the difference between someone who is able to get better, you know, kind of go on along the path and just progressively get better and people who get mired in this and feel like they're stuck for a mm-hmm. longer period of time. Yeah. And what you just said is one of the factors. Is someone mm-hmm. able to to live in the gray? It, are they able to live with uncertainty? Is like mm-hmm. is to me a predictor. If yeah. someone and and by the way and you know this as well as I do Rose at this point you could probably write a book on this but um <laughs> Some people are, are are develop those patterns earlier in their lives, like that inability mm-hmm. to be with certainty, or with yeah. uncertainty rather. And often they've never really had to confront it until mm-hmm. now, until they're yeah. in this situation where there are no clear answers, no one knows, mm-hmm. no doctors telling them anything. They yeah. have to kind of take something on faith, and it is so 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 hard, but yeah. so rewarding ultimately yeah. because truly certainty is an illusion anyway. So if people yeah. can <laughs> live in that space, it, it really yeah. is a better life ultimately, totally. but it's so hard. So hard. I know, I think on a good day, any average person being, having to wait to hear an answer or know something, it's hard. It's just hard. It's so hard. Um, yeah. And I did have a doctor years ago, you know, when I was dealing with some other health stuff, tell me, you know, there's only so much we know. He's like, doctors will tell you they know everything about the human body. And he's like, I'm here to tell you we don't. <laughs> we don't. So he said, sometimes the best we can do for you is just rule out nefarious things. 
And I, he's like, I know that's hard to hear, but sometimes that's all we can do. And then we, you know, we can't go in. We wish we could go in and like find exactly, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on. But that's always kind of stuck with me. And that stuck with me a little bit too. Like at the end of the day, like, you know, as much as doctors want to help, they, they can't necessarily, and this feels like it's such an individual journey for every person to figure out kind of what works best for them. You know, we were talking about earlier too, like I know my journey might be different from someone who isn't in the thick of like young kids and the chaos and the stress and all that that goes into that. So it might take me a little longer to like fully recover, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's okay. You know, like I just, I'm like, you know what? That's just where I'm at at in my life. And um, okay, like it will take me, you know, I'm just, I'm here for the ride and I know there are going to be bumps and they stink. They're not fun, but uh, they'll pass. So I think that's like where I've kind of come on the other side is that I at least have the knowledge that it's not forever and it's not so black and white thinking. Um, wow. But it took a long time to get there. <laughs> I was just about <laughs> to say, so, so this, what you've developed, this, this grace is beautiful to see. I would love it if you could tell us if you had this grace back when you were in the thick of it, like you were describing earlier. Yeah. Did you, how did you think about it at that point? So I think when I was in the thick of it, honestly, I do feel like it is something that it's, The first, like I said, six weeks for me, I think I just had to be where I was because there, I just didn't have knowledge, right? There was not, and I think it was the worst part symptomatically for me. I think after that, there was a lot of things that happened in like mid to late November that kind of started my road to like getting there with the grace. Um, So one thing was that I had met with a physical, uh, vestibular physical trainer who had mentioned 3PD to me, um, which I hadn't heard at that point. Um, And the second thing was that I also found your channel, which was like a huge, like, oh my gosh, there's people who, yes, that was a huge help. And seeing your recovery stories and being like, oh gosh, this is possible. And then also seeing like how other people struggled with it mentally. Um, And then, uh, like I said to you earlier, your interview with the therapist from mind body therapy mm-hmm. was Daniel very Lyman. impactful for mm-hmm. me. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I was having trouble finding a therapist. And so I was like, Oh no, I just need to go to them. And I found an incredible counselor um, who I started with in like mid or late November. And that was like a huge help for me to meet with someone who knew exactly what I was going through, who didn't deny what I what was happening to me, who worked with many people who've gone through this. Um, and she's someone I continue to like want to see regularly just because I love her. So I think um, that was like a big area of like giving myself some grace. Um, and then the other kind of big thing where things shifted for me, where I was able to convince myself this was a software issue and not a hardware issue was that we had had this family trip planned for like months. We were supposed to go in November. And I mean, I was like, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it, you know? And luckily my, my partner, my husband um, was very much like, I think we should try. I think we should try and go. And the physical therapist was like, you should go you should go. Cause I'm like, I'm going to go on this trip. And literally the day leading up, I was just bawling. I was so dizzy packing all my stuff. Um, because I don't like flying like to begin with, like actually flying is one of the few times when I felt quote unquote normal that I would feel very dizzy and like kind of out of body experience and flying makes me really anxious. I don't like it. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not a good flyer normally. Like this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to get stuck on this plane and like, be like, you know, Kristen Wiig and bridesmaids, like, help me, <laughs> like, get me off this plane. <laughs> so I was just, I was like, you know, I, um, so luckily it was like a short flight to a longer flight. And my husband's like, let's do the short flight, see how you do. And then, you know, we'll go from there. If we have to, we'll get back on the plane. We'll turn right around. Um, but I think this would be really good. And Um, I remember that morning I was just like despondent. Like I'd gotten like three hours of sleep and I was just like, I don't even care anymore. Like, and we get on the first flight and I feel fine. And then 
we get on the second flight and it was like the first time in like almost two months where I had, it was like a five hour flight and the entire flight I felt normal. And I was like, what is going on? Like I watched a movie. I couldn't even watch TV when all this was happening. And I was like, I, I watched a movie like, Oh my gosh. And I'm like, can I live on this plane? Like, I guess I'm going to be a stewardess now. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I just, so that was when I was like, if it was a hardware thing, like if you broke your leg, you're not going to get on a plane and your legs like going to unbreak. Right. So I'm like, if this was like a, a hardware thing, like I would, that wouldn't help. Right. I mean, even like I've dealt with tinnitus kind of sense this and that's like a whole other, you know, I think a lot of these things have helped me with that. But, um, I always like, it's not like I do something and it goes away. Right. So that was a big indicator to me, um, that this was definitely something that could go away. Um, and so that trip was actually really helpful. And there were, you know, as soon as we got, a, I, I felt good until we like got into the line to check in and I was like, Whoa. Um, but I was like, okay, like I'm gonna push myself on this vacation. I'm going to walk down these hallways, even though I feel really, really weird. I'm going to like get outside. Um, and that was like, I remember like, I actually like wanted to eat cause I felt better enough to like eat. Um, so those were like some of the places where I was able to uh, get some grace and give myself some forgiveness and start that journey. Um, but honestly, I don't, when I was like really in the thick of it, I don't know if anyone coming to like hold my hand and be like, it's okay, would have actually made a difference. I think the other thing that kind of gave me that was going on an SSRI. So I had um, been on one after I had my first child because I had some postpartum anxiety and I used it as a tool for a very short, oh, like a year. And then it, I, it was a low dose. I was comfortable with it. Um, and so I'm very thankful that I had had that experience. So then when this all happened, I was like, okay, I need to just do this again. And that to me was kind of this, the tool I needed personally to get to the step where I could give myself grace because mm -hmm. like, I feel like someone just threw a ladder into the deep, dark abyss and I was able to like slowly climb up and see some light. Um, wow. and that was, you know, a huge and, you know, I just went on a low dose and thought, like, if I need to, I can go higher, like, and going off of it, at least personally for me, was not an issue. So I, I think um, I'm really glad I had gone through that before, because I know that is a very touchy subject for people. And even the first time, it's like, I don't want to go, I don't need medicine, like what, you know, so I think that was also a very helpful step in my journey mm -hmm. of, um getting to a, a place I could give myself some grace Wonderful. and acceptance. Yeah. People are going to, I have so much to unpack from what you just said, but, <laughs> but the, the question on people's minds, can you, would you, if you mind, would not mind sharing, excuse me, which yeah. one you used? Cause people will want to know. Yeah. Uh, I use Celexa. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny because when I went on it the first time, my, I actually had some dizziness. And so I was like, Oh, should I do this again? Mm -hmm. But yeah. I figured I, I don't know. I was like, I can't get any more dizzy than this. Like I'm, you know, um, but to me also that to me, it was like a tip off of like, maybe my response to anxiety and like, cause it was like the first couple of weeks when you're kind of, when things can kind of feel a little worse is dizziness. So I'm like, Oh, you know, that kind of makes sense now. Cause it wasn't, it's not a common side effect. Like Right. of that. Um, right. But right. So yeah. It's like you had that neural circuit kind of locked and loaded and like, yeah. ready to go. I was like, you know, yeah. maybe that it was something that, yeah. you know, I don't know. Could be. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although yeah. what you were, you were saying before was that, you know, this had happened before too. So I think people are more likely if they're going to have a neural circuit symptom come up, it's more likely to be a symptom that the body already kind of knows like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been there. I can we reactivate that one. We like that yeah. one. Yeah. I know that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. So what's so interesting in, in what you just shared, I mean, so many interesting things about what you just shared, but the thing that struck me was when you were talking about how going on this vacation really helped move you forward. And again, that's kind of another one of those little gems that I think about when I think, okay, who's going to get stuck and who's not. Not to say that 
this is always the case, but sometimes when people have young children, when they have a supportive family around them, they have no choice but to keep going. They just have to. Yeah. There yeah. is no choice. And it sucks at the, at the time. It just, it's awful yeah. at the time. But in some ways, it while it can also bring a lot of guilt and shame that I, I want to ask you about, Mm -hmm. It also can be a bit of a blessing because it forces people not to retreat into their homes and get stuck in a dark room yeah. or get stuck yeah. not moving, which happens yeah. to some people. And then pulling yourself out of that can be really, really difficult. Whereas if you yeah. kept moving and then you start to realize, wait, this is a brain programming error, your life is, has not shrunk down so much yeah. that it's hard to get it back. That is so interesting to hear that. I just, I guess I never really realized like, Hey, some, some of this was like, I had to, like, I you can't, had to. Yeah, I did. You had to. And it also, yeah. just from the way that your husband talked to you, just from the way yeah. you're, you're explaining that to me, I can tell you have a good, solid, supportive, loving relationship. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I cannot overstate how important that is and also a factor in making your nervous system say, okay, I'm safe yes. enough to try something that's yeah. scary. Yeah. But I hear from people all the time and they have the same symptoms that you have and they had the same initial event, but they're on their own or they're in a relationship that's not so supportive. And yeah. they, and it's just, you. this isn't a pull yourself up by your bootstrap situation. This is like a this is a community effort. This is yeah. not, you yeah. can't do this on your own or yeah. you shouldn't have to do this on your own, I should say. So that. I, you know, when I was thinking about this interview, you know, you asked like, what are some of the tips? One of the things I was thinking of is like your support group. Like, I mm -hmm. hope that you show this video to your partner because it really does make a difference or, or your family that they understand and work. I, I was so lucky through this um, to have a good support group. My, I, I have thanked my mom and sister relentlessly for being there for me when this got really hard, especially my mom who was like, you can lay in bed, I'll do this and, you know, um, help with the kids here or there. But also, like you said, it was helpful that there were many times where I didn't want my kids to know anything was going on. And so I had to put on a happy face, but Honestly, some of the first times I did start feeling better were times where I was just playing with my kids right. um, and just focused on them. Um, but also, you know, my partner and working with him and what is best for me through this time and checking in with me. And um, but it's funny because now, you know, he used to check in a lot more. And now it's like there's not as much of a need to say like, oh, are you mm -hmm. feeling dizzy today? How are you feeling? Which is so nice. But, um, you know, it's it's so hard because it's just something like you look at someone and you can't tell how they are feeling in their body. Um, and so it's hard because, you know, you look normal, but you're not. Um, so I think having your family be really supportive and help you um, is super important. It, it really is. Um, but also, yeah, I think, you know, it's no one's going to do it for you except for you, too. And there was a moment where I had yes. uh, this, you know, like no doctor, no person, no, like the only person that's going to help me get better is me. So here we go. And then, you know, leaning in a little bit to some of the, like going out and, and when I would get dizzy going out and doing things going, this is my system regulating itself. This is good. This is actually good because I'm desensitizing myself to the grocery store. I'm desensitizing myself so that I can spin my kids around and dance. Um, like I, I think I started seeing things as like, this is actually recalibrating because if you're feeling good, your brain's going to go, oh, I don't need to throw off the alarm guards when I'm going into a grocery store. And even now, sometimes it happens and I'm like, this is good. If I'm stressing out and I'm feeling it, like I, I just am trying to practice coming back to you, like myself and saying, all right, I'm just, I'm just, re my system's regulating itself. And if I feed the beast, it's going to think the alarm bells need to go off. But if I work on regulating and staying calm as best I can, um, that's great. But at the end of the day too, I think also being very forgiving with yourself when you're having a rough day and you want to just be mad and frustrated. Yes. That's okay too. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. So, so two things that you yeah. just said, 
And then I have two questions. Oh gosh, okay. I hope I can keep track of all this stuff. Okay. The first thing, okay. what you said reminded me so much of what Mark H said in his interview, which was, he said, he started to see the sensations as exactly the medicine yes. he needed to get better. I and remember so, his too. Right. I know. I, that I feel like was I actually, him. yeah, no, that yes. was actually, I remember him saying that and that I really, I absorbed that. I was like, okay, you're right. It is That's it. the medicine mm -hmm. you need. Yeah. It is the medicine you need. Yeah. But then the other thing that you said, so what people I think get confused about is when we say, okay, you know, help, you know, you want to start working with the fear and soothing yourself and all that stuff. And they're like, but I respond automatically with fear. And then I just messed it all up. It's not, you can't control your automatic reaction. You can control what happens in response to your automatic reaction. So the forgiveness yeah. that you're talking about, the the grace that you allow yourself. Okay. So I, I had a fear reaction because yes, this is scary. And you know what? I'm a human and it's okay that I had that kind of reaction. Yeah. I'm here with myself. And ultimately that's when you can kind of bring in the, it's a sensation that I need in order for my brain to rewire itself. But you totally. start with accepting and allowing the fact that you're a person and you're going to have reactions like that. And you, you're allowed to feel scared when something scary happens. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. So, okay. So now two different directions I want to go in first, okay. because I think this is something everyone who watches a success story wants to hear. Could you just give us a sense of all the different symptoms you had? You mentioned that yes. you were, at, especially at first, it was 24 seven, you were feeling mm -hmm. them all the time. So what, yes. what, what were you feeling? Um, like I said, so I would feel like dizzy, dizzy, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you stood up too fast, that, that mm -hmm. kind of sensation of dizziness, the feeling of like, I knew I was sitting still, and like, I would even like literally say to myself, you are still now, you're in bed, you're like, here are your hands, here are your legs. But it was almost like I was sitting on a, a roundabout thing at the, the playground. Like it felt like I was just uh, spinning and that was really common. Um, that was mm. it, like traveled with me a while. Um, so it was this weird feeling of like, I would be talking to someone and feel like I'm like spinning. Even It was just so wild. Um, at the very beginning, a lot of like floaty, like I was just in the ether. Um, I couldn't like, it was just really, really weird. Um, I like, you know, walking through grocery stores and feeling kind of like you're on a boat, um, uh, like you're being kind of pushed around by the wind. So some of that feeling too. Um, the stuff with my eyesight and having some issues focusing. You couldn't read. I couldn't. While, right? Yeah. And like, but even like reading would make me feel dizzy. I remember one time I went to journal and just doing that made me feel dizzy. Uh, wow. my goodness, TV, like you never knew how many camera movements, like, I mean, I guess I did, but it's so funny because it's like, wow, we're really desensitized. Like every commercial was like, psh, 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 or like there yeah. was, you know, I, I could watch a little TV, but I remember I tried to watch like a handheld show where it was like kind of reality style. And I was like, turn it off. Um, because it would make me sick. Um, so just even, you know, I, I was mentioning I like knitting. I actually started knitting because of this, because it was like something I could do. But even the motion of like looking and knitting would make me feel kind of dizzy. Um, uh, but yeah, so it was like walking, moving, sitting, like pretty much 24 seven, just mm -hmm. lots of unpleasant sensations. Um, and then I also did have tinnitus that kind of went away, kind of came back this last year. So I kind of had to deal Still with working it. With that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have some earfulness on my left side for some reason, but I don't know if that's actually to do with any of this. I was joking with my counselor. I was like, I just wish that that was like an issue with my foot because I'm like <laughs> my ears, right? Like, I'm just like my ear, like body, please give me a break. Like, I don't need any more issues with my ears, um, but Symptom also like rift. kind of. Yeah. Symptom so drift. just, yeah. yeah, exactly. We've talked a lot about symptom drift too. So, yes. you know, um, but, uh, yeah, one of my mantras, uh, because it's given me a lot of health anxiety, just going through all this is, uh, bodies have sensations. So whenever anything happens to me, I just have to sit and go, bodies have sensations. Everybody feels dizzy. Sometimes everybody feels these ways. It's not because I have a crazy neurological, like, you know, I'm not dying. Um, so bodies have sensations. My leg hurts today. What, you know, it doesn't mean I have cancer of the foot. Right. So, right. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Again, yeah. I know that's that's a maybe a question we didn't need to go into mm -hmm. depth on, but people really like to hear a list oh, like that because they know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's how they know, okay, wait, maybe this does apply to me. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to ask about. So when you were coming back to our timeline here, so we mm -hmm. were in November, you start seeing these moments of gl like glimmers that's mm -hmm. starting to accumulate this evidence. You yes. start working with the counselor. Um, I, I know the answer here, but I'd love for you to share it with others. Yeah. From there, did things just get better? Like, <laughs> yeah, <generally>? totally. I <laughs> yeah. just, I went to one counseling session and then I was yeah. healed. It was great. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I, you know, December, I, I remember like in late November, I was like, oh, my eyes are kind of coming back online. Um, and then I also noticed like, you know, after we returned from my trip, anytime I drove, I felt normal. So that was kind of like a nice treat. And and sometimes there were days where I was like feeling so dizzy. I'm like, I'm just going to get in my car. I'm going to go do an errand. I'm going to drive mm -hmm. somewhere just to have yeah. some relief. Mm -hmm. um, so that was actually kind of nice that like being in a car didn't bother me. Um, and even like some, like, it's funny because the TV used to like bother me, but like even watching like a video game, that's like, sometimes that would help me weirdly enough. So um, yeah, just things like that. Uh, but I remember December was still pretty tough, like getting through Christmas, I still didn't feel great. And it was just a very like, almost someone was just kind of slowly turning the volume down on it. Um, and it was very much a two step forward, one step back, I'd have like a good hour or, um, but I vividly remember January of this year, I went on a trip with my daughter and um, this was the first like time I really, you, n I normally wouldn't go and do this by myself, right? Cause it's stressful to go out with like a toddler and um, yeah, she's what three or four at this point. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. I think there was like a day, you know, we went to visit my sister and there was a day where like two hours of the day I felt like good. And I was like, whoa. And I even said to my sister, like, I actually had like half a day, like a two, two like the morning I felt normal for like, and that was like, you know, that happened like twice when we were there. And then that kind of just kept expanding. Right. So it was like that time of feeling normal kept kind of expanding. And then the times when I felt dizzy kind of kept the, the, getting more and more mild. Um, so even now, like I still have symptoms here or there, but like my best day in the past is like my worst day now. Right. So, um, yeah, I just feel like, uh, sometimes for some reason for me, like sitting down for dinner is like a trigger. I think it's cause I'm like up and doing stuff. So a lot of times when I sit down for dinner in the first like few minutes, I'm like, mm, I feel kind of weird. And that went from like a few minutes to like now every once in a while it'll be like a 30 second, like, whoa. Um, or if I'm like moving around a lot, I'll notice like, oh, like I'll sit down for a second here and like kind of like gather myself. So uh, even like spinning around with my kids, I'm more sensitive to like getting dizzy now. And that's, you know, I, I kind of am like, that's okay. Part of my medicine, you know, it's. Uh, I think even on that trip in January, we went on like a carousel and I was like, I really don't want to do this, but I did it because like you said, I have kids and my daughter was really afraid to do it. And I was like, we're going to, we're going to be brave. And I was like, I got to be brave too. Cause I don't feel great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think January was like the, like feeling like things were getting there. And then to be quite honest, like there were some setbacks on the way when my like tell us about returned. Those. Yeah, because like when my tinnitus, about that. Yeah, yeah, like when my tinnitus returned or when I had some fullness, like those caused a lot of spike in anxiety and thus, you know, a spike in dizziness. So I would say there were like times where like a week or two I would feel not great. Um, but then kind of the anniversary of everything, October of this year was like my best month. Like I felt really great. And then since then, you know, holidays, things like that, I've had times here or there. But right now I would say I'm in a really great stretch. I've been feeling really, really good um, the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so I think, you know, I think in October I was like, I'm about 90% there. Like I'm doing really good. So it took, I would say almost an entire year to like feel, I went on a trip in September um, and the whole trip I felt like normal. So that was a big deal for me too. Sorry, I just unplugged my computer. <laughs> um, <laughs> no worries. But, and that was like, I was really surprised because I thought, oh, I'm going to feel 
really not great and on this trip and I was like, wow, I feel like if you drop me in here from before this all happened, I would never notice that I had had this huge event happen to me. So wow. that's, Pretty you know, neural circuit dizziness indicator right there, right? Yeah. People yeah. So it's like, oh, magically it's gone. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, like I said to you, like, I kind of see this as this journey, right? So I don't like, I'm not like, oh, I need to get to a certain point. It's just like, I, when I think about like five years down the road, I'm like, I think by then I'll be feeling good, great again, but that's okay if I have, you know, moments here or there or, um, because I, I, like I said, I'm just in a really stressful time in my life and that's just how it is. Um, so if anything, I might come out very strong on the other end because I've had to deal with this while also dealing with the chaos of, you know, cutting a banana wrong and having a full four meltdown. So, yeah, you know, Amen. just, yeah. So question then. So yes. one of the things that, so people hear this sometimes they're like, oh my gosh, but it's going to take a long time. And, you know, here's Rose and she's worked so hard and she's 90% better and she's still a sensation sometimes. And they just feel so full of grief and despair over that. Whereas mm -hmm. you're, you're feeling that way and you're like, I feel hopeful. I feel good. I feel accepting. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, this is part of my journey. This is making me strong. So what, in your opinion, what do you think helped you get to having that perspective yeah. on this versus feeling just despair over that yeah. reality? Um, yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of grief. I mean, and I think that's what I really dealt with at the beginning of that grief of thinking this is forever. And I'm always, and even now there are still days where I get really angry. It's like, why me? What really? Like, did I, you know? Um, so there's, you know, it's not perfect, but I think for me, it was so awful that I remember when this first happened, I thought if I felt five to 10% of this for the rest of my life, I'll take it because this is so bad. So obviously like, I don't really want to feel sure. that way forever. But um, to me, I still am able to do and find joy in life. And when I look back at times, even, you know, over Thanksgiving, like I was in it and I had some some dizziness. And I don't think like, oh, I had dizziness. It's like, I had this wonderful meal with my family and friends. It was great. Like I, you know, I recently sat down because we're, you know, a couple days left in the year. And I looked at this last year and I'm like, I did so much. Like in May we were, you know, traveling as a family. Like do I was like, wow, I really did a lot this year. Like there's a lot. And I did that all while I didn't feel great. So I think maybe finding some hope in like, even if you don't like so many people do deal with so many things. I think that's the other thing too, is as I've kind of opened up to other people about this, um, because you feel a lot of shame. So a lot, I've even talked to some friends recently who are like, I had no idea. I had no idea you went. And I'm like, I know I didn't talk. I didn't want to talk. I was like ashamed and scared and sad. And I didn't want anyone to know. Um, and then they're like, oh, I know someone with vestibular migraine. Or you talk to anyone who's like, oh, I also have this going on. I have this going on. Chronic and it's pain. like, oh, wow. Yes, or chronic depression or, or yeah, a chronic illness. And so I think, I think that's also helped me. Like, you aren't alone in chronic dizziness, but you aren't alone in chronic anything. There's a lot of people out there dealing with a whole umbrella of things every day that they still have to get up out of bed and, and, and keep going. So I think that to me kind of is like, I'm not alone in the human experience of like, your body doesn't always function the way you want it to. And like, you kind of have to do the best with what you got. Um, and kind of sit in that, if that makes sense and go, mm -hmm. okay, like, I'm still going to find joy. I'm still going to find, like, go after the things I want. Um, and, and that's the medicine. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's and actually that's, medicine too. Yeah, yeah that is totally. Right? You so know, I think, yeah. yeah, what you're saying, you know, I, I think I want people to, to understand we're not saying, well, you're just going to be dizzy for the rest of your life. So no. just find joy where you can. We're saying, yeah, don't wait until you're feeling better to start finding joy and meaning because the joy and meaning will actually heal you too. It'll like it actually will make you feel better. It will make yeah. you feel better. Yeah. It, and yeah. with time and Rose, we're gonna we're not we're not not done with this conversation yet, but I, yeah. I want to just say I would love to follow up with you in a year because I think yeah. you're gonna be in a total you mean you're gonna be in an yeah. even better place then. Yeah. Um, 
not emotionally, you're in an amazing place, but I'm, ta- I'm oh, talking about you're going to come on and you're gonna be like, yeah, I haven't had a sy- symptom in six months. So I don't yeah. even think about it yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, one of the, I, I wanted to point out from my perspective, two things in what you said are super important. So the first is that in order to get to this place of acceptance, we have to work through the grief. Um, mm-hmm. And I, and I was wondering if you had anything to say about that, but before you answer that, the other mm-hmm. thing that you're saying is, is one of the remedies for this is feeling not alone. And th- that's why mm-hmm. I have a channel like this. That's why yes. I have so many yes. comments and I do so many interviews of people so that people really hear, know, like be feel like, Hey, like for real, you're really not alone with this. Yes, And it does get better. Uh, but even when you're in the depths of it, you are not sitting there by yourself and in an in that there is already healing in that there's already hope. Yes. Right. And like I said, finding your channel was a huge, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a ton of other people going. Clearly. Like, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, that alone helped me feel like, oh, I'm not just this weird anomaly that, you know, um, you know, I wish the medical establishment would kind of catch on to it a little bit. Working because, on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, um, I, yeah, I think that's a, that's a huge part of it is not feeling alone and then, um, you know, finding that joy. Yes. So um, yeah. what helped you work through the grief and the despair? I mean, I know you, cause yeah. you, I can tell you're, you have this joy of life kind of as part of who you are. So I think you probably yeah. were able to take in the hope and the and the knowledge that this was something that could be reversed, but maybe, I don't know if this is something you worked on in therapy at all. Did that help with that? Oh, totally. And just, <sighs> if you wouldn't mind talking to us about that a little bit, that would yeah. be. Yeah. So, and, and like I said, you know, the SSRI was a huge help for me because that sure. was like, you know, and I, I do like, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So I always like, you know, like to use the metaphor of like, it felt like there was a dementor, like just sucking it all out of you. You know, it yes. was really, really hard. Um, that is, I think our first Harry Potter reference in a success story. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm so happy right now. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Uh, yeah, actually I feel like there, I was reading one of the books or like a quote from one of the books and I'll have to find it and send it to you later. Cause I like wrote it down. Cause I was like, this oh. is like totally perfect for my recovery. Oh, I will, I will put that yes. all over Instagram. Perfect. So I love yes. it. <laughs> yes. I will find that. It's like something Dumbledore said. And I was like, Oh, that's so good. Um, but, uh, I think, um, hold on with therapy, at my notes. Cause I, yes. Yeah, so therapy was a big thing. Um, I think radical acceptance, we've talked about that a little bit of like, like, I don't know how to, to describe it as like pushing in or like not caring anymore in the fact that I was like, you know what, this is it. And I have to figure this out. I have a family. I got to I got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So I need to figure out uh, something that we worked in in counseling, obviously is like somatic tracking was like super, super helpful. Um, and working with particular things that were like really flare ups for me with the dizziness, like using the computer. I I don't think I opened my computer again until like March to like start working on that. Um, and you know, but, um, one of the things my counselor said was like, when these things happen, cause I, you know, what's wrong with me? My first reaction is what's wrong with me. It's what does my body need? And I remember like when she said that, I was like, this is BS. Like, there is something wrong. Like, don't tell me that. And like, you know, of course, you know, a couple of days later, I'm like rolling it around and I'm like, what if I, what if I like accept that? What if I actually accept that? And so when I have times of dizziness, when I have times of tinnitus or earfulness or all the, you know, not fun stuff that is just like, can suck you down the whirlpool of anxiety or grief. I just think my body is telling me something right now. What do I do to serve myself? Um, Like overarching and then in the moment. So even today, getting ready for the interview, like thinking about this interview, uh, you know, I was obviously taking notes and thinking about it for many days. And um, it's funny because I actually am very surprised because normally when I talk about my stuff, I actually feel my symptoms and I felt really great. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, I just expected to like, you know, but I like told my husband, like, I need like 30 minutes to like sit down, like calm myself down. And then tonight I was like, I'm going to take a really nice bath. 
Like we're going to get the kids down and I'm just going to take a really nice bath and like give myself some self care because this is like a big deal and I might feel dizzy after this and that's okay. But like figuring out the ways you can serve yourself and serve your body because you know, no one else is going to do it for you. And, and, you know, um, so I think like turning around and giving like love to yourself, giving that, um, and it's not easy. It's, it's a lot of journey, but a, a big journey, but I think, yeah, I think the therapy counseling stuff was a huge part of dealing with that grief. And also, you know, this touches on so many like other parts in your life and it's not just one thing. Right. So we kind of like, like open Pandora's box <laughs> together. It's I was like, wondering. oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's interesting because I've dealt with a little chronic pain with like neck and back stuff. And since doing therapy, it's like, I haven't had a flare up. That's kind of funny. Wow. Or like I've, it's hurt me and it goes away in two days, not six months. So it is interesting that whack-a-mole of like, oh, well, this is stuff that was already happening before this happened. Um, so like, Right. Now's the time to kind of confront that in myself and work through it. But right. therapy is super, super helpful. It really is. Um, right. Yeah. Another thing that I look at, right? Um, so with VPPV, again, most people don't develop chronic symptoms. So what, mm -hmm. what differentiates people who do develop chronic symptoms? And mm -hmm. what you're describing kind of with the neck and back pain and also being under a lot of stress, obviously, understandably, yeah. unavoidably with young children, um, you, your, your brain's kind of set up for it. I mean, yes, you're, it's set yeah. up for it. And if it hits you at just the right time, you're particularly yeah. vulnerable. It can activate that, yeah. that cycle yeah. that ends up becoming yeah. chronic. It's yeah. interesting because I know I've read some of the stuff about like chronic neck TMJ. Like you could just, you put out the list of the symptoms and I'm like, check, 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 check right. for me. Right. So like I also went leading into this was having like some crazy TMJ on my right side. I'm not surprised that that's happened. And that's been a huge journey for me to figure out like, how do I, I mean, I've been to the dentist and massage therapist and figuring out how to, because I do think that's all connected. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's definitely like, at least for me, moving forward, like one of the big things I've been, you know, on my list for next year, which I've already kind of been trying to do is, you know, I know the vestibular, I've learned so much about the vestibular system. I never wanted to know, but yes. I'm like, it's eyes, ears and muscles, right? So it's not just one thing, but I thought like, okay, well, what can I do to strengthen my other two things? Like eyes, like, you know, there's only so much you can kind of do with your eyes, but I'm like, well, I could make sure I'm trying to feed myself the best I can. I'm not a big fan of like diets. And that's also one thing I've really enjoyed about your stuff is you're not like toting like, oh, you cut out all these certain things. Like I don't do well with that. So I'm like, uh, like I'm going to try my best to be a healthy version of myself. And if that includes sometimes having a hamburger and cake, like, because it makes me happy, that's okay. Yes. Um, yes. but the, the biggest other kind of step that I'm personally doing and I think will also help me is like getting back in shape. Um, because I feel like, uh, you know, every doctor I saw was like, yoga, do yoga, do yoga, do yoga, do yoga. And I'm like, okay, but so I'm trying to do yoga, but I also am like, I need, I'm strength weak. training. Strength yeah. Training. Strength. So I have, and I will say it's kind of funny because speaking of having good partners, you know, I go through this whole journey and I, you know, in counseling, she hears me talk every week. I want to work out more. I want to work out more. And um, then my husband was like, I'm going to start working out. And so he like goes for a couple of weeks and I'm like, I'm going to start working out. Like you don't get to just be the person who works out. And so now we're like on this journey together and we've been keeping each other accountable, like going to the gym. It's great. Um, oh, and so I've been good. doing strength training and um, it makes me it's so happy. Yeah. That makes me so and I'm happy. Like, I, I really feel like that's going to help activate that part of my body. Plus, you know, something I'm working towards is like helping my posture by having a stronger back because I have issues with neck stuff and I know that's going to pull my neck back and help me sit up better. And so I just know that's a net positive, right? Plus exercising release endorphins and endorphin people, people with endorphins are happy and yes, you know. resilient, resilient. Yes. yes. And, and so. And Really, everything that you've talked about, we didn't even use that word until I just said it right now. But I just want people to notice just what you're describing as your process of getting better is a process of 
of resilience, of building resilience, yeah. Yeah. of like this idea, this radical acceptance, finding joy, um, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, but in a way that's kind and self-compassionate, uh, strength training, get, being physically yes. active, like all of yes. these things increase your resilience to stress. Because as you said, mm -hmm. and as many people here watching this or listening to this are going to really identify with, you can't control the stressors in your life a lot of the time. Sometimes you can. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, okay, so the problem is this and you need to like <laughs> stop doing that. But it's often not yeah. what you're doing it's or what other people are doing. It's how you're treating yourself when yeah, all these reacting. other things are happening. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And that's still something I am working on. You know, it's, you know, an active journey to get there because it's, you know, I, I think that's the big thing too for me is like, I have to accept that life is stressful and you're right. There's only so much you can control. So I'm like, all right, I'll focus on the things I can control and that's what I can do. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're such a, such a healthy outlook again, just thank you. <laughs> it's really, it's very clear again. I, I, it makes me wonder who Rose was before all this started. Cause I I'm curious to know like how much of this has been you working your butt off in therapy over the last year yeah. and how much of this was you naturally had some of these skills and were able to put them into practice. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know if you know, do you know, yeah. do you know the answer? To I that? would say it's like 50, 50. I think that, I think that I definitely am someone who's obviously highly motivated, but finding like where to put that motivation in a healthy way. Right. Um, without being a perfectionist. Um, and then also like, you know, this has been a big journey for me uh, of kind of figuring out where my values lie in life and saying, this is what I'm prioritizing now, um, rather than prioritizing what I think I should be um, or what I think is expected of me. Um, and then I think the other thing is like having, going through pregnancy and having kids is so hard on your body. It just it's is. So hard. It's yeah. a roller coaster of hormones and emotions and it's a big stress. Um, and, and so raising I think, them. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> yeah. That's not, that's just, yeah. It's, it's, so I think that, um, for me, it's also kind of getting back to my sense of self, which got a little bit lost, which I think a lot of other moms can relate to is, you know, you lose a little bit of that. I, I used to be a long distance runner before all this. So that's probably why I hadn't dealt with some of this chronic dizziness before. Right. Um, because I was someone who was extremely active. Like, you know, when people ask like, Oh, what do you do for fun? It's like, well, I used to run before I had kids. I used to hike before I have kids. I used to camp. I used to go backpacking. I used to go on 13 mile backpacking trips by myself, you know, just right. like, those right. are things that, you know, I haven't obviously been able to get back to, but how do I find, you know, who I am now as a mom? Um, and how do I find those things that bring joy? Because I think I was just naturally kind of derailed from that. And then now I have to kind of find the new path. So I think some of it obviously was just how I am, but I think also there's just been a whole bunch of learning. Um, and to be honest, it's, you know, it's hard because I don't want people to feel, you know, it's like, oh, I'm so glad this happened. Like, obviously, I'm not glad this happened. But I also do think that it has been a blessing in, in a lot of ways of like, helping me to lay down those new tracks of my life, and to figure out how I'm going to prioritize, like, what's going to bring me joy, and strength and resilience. Um, that I think was something I was very much not finding at that time. So wow. I kind of had to have my hand forced, but it's okay. We got there. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Oh, so much wisdom yeah. in what you just said. I was like, thank you. Write this down, no need. Write this down. But then I was like, okay, it's recorded. You can it's write funny. it down later. I can I can I can put this out as a quote somewhere. This is <laughs> that you. is such a that is so so wise. And it what it was making me think about is how this question of of how people recover from PPPD what you describe it sounds like PPPD, even though you didn't have yeah. a formal diagnosis. Um, it, it, it kind of bifurcates because it, it goes in one of two ways. Someone can either grow from it or grow into it. So like grow mm -hmm. into that identity as a person who's sick or grow mm -hmm. despite having had the challenge of feeling ill. And what you're describing, yeah. and, and obviously I, 
I prefer the the former for people. I prefer for them to say, yeah, I had this thing or I have this thing mm -hmm. and I, that's not who I am. That's just yeah. a thing that I'm dealing with. Yeah. The, I think there's a serious danger in identifying with the condition that, that tends to lead people down this very despairing and very yeah. like long-term road. So although I think there's, it's so important for people to find the work that I'm doing or yeah. find, find means of, of getting themselves out of it. And a lot of times that comes with the name, with the diagnosis, it can be yeah. such a relief. I say, once people have the diagnosis or once they realize what's going on, yeah. the more quickly they can let go of that diagnosis and say, yeah. it's a neural circuit problem, the better. Yeah. Because yeah. then they get stuff like what you just said. They get that. They say, they say things like, this made me grow. And it's a thing that happened mm -hmm. to me. It's not a definition of who I yeah. am. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I do feel like, you know, this obviously comes up when I'm around other people sometimes, but mm -hmm. I also, there are times where I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. And it's not because I like, it's just like, I don't want it to be the, the defining factor of every time I hang out with friends and I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, it's like, okay. Sometimes I even like rehearse, like, oh, I'm going to give them this little brief thing and then we're going to move on. Cause I mm -hmm. want to talk about what's going on in their lives or whatever. Like, I don't want it to make to be this, like, I don't know, like this depressing, like thing that I just talk about all the time. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's hard, it's, it's hard to find that, you know, I want to find that balance or I worked on finding that balance, but it is something that I feel like it's, you're, you're like, you're saying it's something that happened to me. Um, and it's interesting. I never, ever thought about like how I actually, you know, because I have young kids, it actually probably pulled me out maybe quicker in some ways. Um, but I will say too, you know, reading or listening to all the success stories, I remember hearing about people who had had this for 10, 15 years, decades and finding relief. So I was like, it doesn't like, I remember that helping me a lot too, being like, it doesn't matter how long I feel this, there is still, you are still yeah. able to get out of it. Um, yeah. So that has really helped me. And then also hearing a lot of other people's recovery stories saying it took me a year, it took me two years, but I had this for seven years. So um, that also really helped me like going, okay, like the, you can always come back from it. It doesn't matter how long you've been in it. And also it's going to be a long road. Um, I think uh, I, I try and remind myself that like nerves take the longest to heal in your body. Um, I, I tell the story like for my wedding, I was spray painting these uh, coasters or something and I totally killed all the nerves in my finger doing it. Oh. Yeah. Like oh, in, the, in the tip of my finger. Yep. Yeah. I was holding the thing down, you know, and it took like two weeks for me to get feeling back. And I was like, that was just the tip of my finger. Right. And I know this is a little different than like neuroplasticity, but it, I don't know, it makes me feel better of like, that takes a long time. And I know I mentioned another book that I read um, was My Stroke of Insight by um, Jill Boyle Taylor. Um, and she talks about neuroplasticity. She had this major stroke and she's a neuroscientist. So she actually like, figured out she was having the stroke while she had it and was like, oh my gosh, I'm having a stroke. And it's this whole story about her road to recovery. And that was actually very... Um, insightful for me because she talks about how doctors tell people, okay, once whatever you regain in six months is what you're going to regain and that's it. Yeah. Don't expect to heal more or get any, uh, things, you know, coming back online after that. And she's like, it took me seven years and I got back. like, don't get into that mindset because then you won't heal. You won't find mm -hmm. that place of hope. And that really, resonated with me because I'm like, if this lady went through like a crazy stroke that, you know, she lost, she had to relearn everything and it took her, she still came back and got to like almost a hundred percent. Like I can get through this too. So that was a, a great read. I would totally suggest if you're kind of in the depths of things to make you feel a little hopeful. I'll be so. sure to put that um, in yeah. the video description too. And I, I, I think that's why some of these myths get spread about it. PPPD, like, oh, if it's been six months, oh, if it's been a year, and people mm -hmm. feel like they're on some kind of, first of all, just totally artificial timeline. <laughs> totally yes. artificial. Yeah. Because doctors will say, well, according to research, except we PPPD, 
is a definition that was coined about a decade ago, if yeah. that. So it's so we, new. It's it's new. The, the definition is new. The symptoms the aren't yeah, sorry. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I, definition sure. is new. The, we people yeah. have been having it for longer, like you, like yeah. you were just about to say. Yes, for sure. Um, but don't just just basically just don't listen to anyone who's tell you who tells you that you can't heal. Just don't. Just don't listen yeah. to them. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that. that well, right, how lucky are stuff. we to be alive in a time where like there's even a name for it? I mean, I can't imagine people dealing with this a century or two ago. <laughs> like, oh, they're just crazy. Like, lock them up. Like, you know, it's like yeah. you. Yes. I, I mean, I I think that we are able to like, I, I feel very lucky that there is even a name. Um, and that like people are able to get recovery and I'm sure there will be more research and more, you know, help, but it does really feel like there's not going to be a magic pill that you take ever to help with this. It's all got to be neuroplasticity, which is incredible that our bodies can even do that. For it's, sure. it's, a, it's amazing. You know, For sure. I will say I've learned a lot about the human body and I'm like, it's an incredible machine. It so, is. Yeah. It is. And that's, you know, you were saying something earlier about that, how, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember at what point in the conversation, but you were saying something about how it can take, it can take time for things to heal. And I was thinking mm -hmm. that's, I mean, it's never too late because your brain is doing neuroplasticity day in, day out from birth till the day yeah. you die. It, and yeah. So no matter how long people have had this, your brain can absolutely rewire and change. And, and it just, yeah. especially for those of you out there, which is most of you who don't have any physical damage, who, who don't mm -hmm. have any identifiable physical damage. There's just no reason yeah. why you can't get better. So yeah, again, just yeah. don't listen to people who say that. Yeah. You, you in get the, to in the, to. Totally. So, in the, in the rock study book, she talks about, you know, people who lose half of their like vestibular uh, inner ear system and they're able to um, recalibrate from that. So that mm -hmm. also kind of stuck with me is like, you could lose half of your balance system and your body will compensate. So I think that, you know, kind of was like, okay, like your body will figure it out. It might take some time because your, your body's been moving a certain way and being a certain way for X amount of years. But that also kind of helped me feel like, okay, all right. Um, yeah. That's good to know. So. Yeah. Yeah. I have a video out about that uh, topic where I, I have a friend who had a brain tumor that took out the entire vestibular nerve. So she has no balance function or hearing on one side of her mm -hmm. head and she doesn't have any dizziness at all. Her brain compensates yeah. for it. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. If your brain yeah. can do that, it could, it could, it can manage this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So before we close any words of advice or wisdom, anything else you want to share with people who are going through this right now? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, again, reiterating, like you're not alone. Um, I would say, you know, find what works for you because everybody is different. Everyone's situation is different. Um, everyone's community is different, but I think finding a community is really important. I think finding people who will hold you accountable or things that will hold you accountable um, is super helpful because then you have to get out of bed. You have to do the thing you have to, you know, there's been times where I'm like, I don't feel great, but I, I invited people over. Or I got to do this. So, um, and then just being graceful with yourself. Um, you know, there are times where I get distracted by my dizziness and I'm like, Oh, I missed whatever this person, I, you know, I'm talking to someone. Cause for me, um, social, I mean, surprise, surprise, but social um, interactions sometimes bring it on yes. and I'll be in the mm -hmm. middle of talking with someone and kind of feel it. And so I'm like trying to pay attention, but also like, also not like deny it. So it's, it's a dance, you know, um, but being forgiving, like you're going through something, you know, if you miss what someone says, people zone out all the time, like it's okay. So I think just being forgiving um, and, you know, working with whatever works best for you and then knowing that it's a journey. Um, I think that's a big place for me, even currently, is that, yeah, I think that there are months or of time now where I'm feeling great, um, but it's going to be a journey. Um, and that took a long time for me to even get to, like, even though it's been a year and I still feel it, it doesn't mean it's going to be my whole life. And if there are 
points in my life where I have some resurgence, that's okay. I know I can get back to it. Um, and that's all right. It's just my body going, Ooh, this is this old path that we're going to try and take. And the more I pull away from it, the more I know I'm going to, you know, so yeah. 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 And I'm, I hope that's helpful. I really do. Um, I'm sure I missed like 5,000 other things, but I know um, often people send emails after they're still like, you, please put all this in the video description because I forgot <laughs> to say all of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I if know. you if you think of anything, no worries. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. will put any additional notes in the video description so people can read it. But as I said, I'm I'll I'll be I'll be getting in touch with you again because yeah. I'd like to hear how you're doing. And even if it's not a, an interview, even me just yeah. kind of knowing you're doing well and things are going great, I can put that out there somewhere too so people can follow right. up on you. Yeah. yeah. Well, well thank, thank you, you again for having me. Yeah. Of course. Thank thank I, you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like this is here. a big step in my recovery. I think I was telling you, like, there was a moment where I was like, I'm gonna be on her video. And I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be on her videos, but I was like, I'm gonna be a success story. And I'm like, I'm here. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So I'm just like so happy to be here and feel like, oh my gosh, I I did that. Like it's a big deal. I so, know it is. Yeah. I and I I've heard that. I've heard that it may not be in some of the recordings because people sometimes tell me before or after, but yeah. um, I've heard that from multiple people like, wow, Yoni, this feels like closing the chapter so I it can does. go on to the next chapter. Like yeah. me saying it out loud means it's really true. It's happened and now yeah. I can move on. So I, yeah. again, I, I feel grateful because you're serving others. I mean, you're, you're really, these kinds of stories help so many thousands, I'm mean, literally thousands of people yeah. and goodness knows how many thousands of people are going to listen to it after it first comes out. So yeah, thank you for, for being willing to share it. I know yeah. it was a super vulnerable time and thank it's you. not easy to talk about these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. And thank you to all of you for watching or listening. So, uh, please let me know if you enjoy this kind of stuff leave a comment. You can ask questions, drop them below. If you're on YouTube, if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can also head over to YouTube and join the conversation. I love that. If you enjoy my content in general, you can like, share, subscribe, follow the podcast. All these things help me reach more people. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye everyone. And bye Rose. Thank you. Bye. Bye.